you know, have some kind of abuse or some kind of activity on it, rest, uh, all those things that express time and use. And using those in the work, I think, affects that sense of time. Um, structure is really important to me. Um, and I think it's just second nature because of my more classical art training. I, I think that always is something that I'm thinking about in terms of how things are put together, um, the kinds of forms that butt up against each other, the you know, way I organize something is, is really important in the work. Um, and then also, I would say, and I'm categorizing this all at once, as serendipity, play, invention, and intuition. Um, I rarely know exactly the way a piece is going to look when I'm finished anymore. Um, and I'm really comfortable with that. In fact, I think it's really important for me to have a sense of mystery about how things are going to evolve in the work. Um, I usually start out with the idea of what I hope to convey. I mean, that's really important to me to know. But beyond that, and sometimes there's a certain kind of material uh, that will evoke something in me or a shape or a form or something. But most of the time, um, I let the work lead me into the resolution of it. So for instance, in this sculptural piece over here, I knew it's called, it's complicated. And it, I knew that I wanted it to be a complex lay form and that I wanted it to have a lot of sense of spaces or rooms in it. Um, and I, you know, so I started with the interior and just sort of worked out and just kept building it until I thought it was done. And so I had no idea exactly how it was going to look when it was finished, but I had a sense of what I wanted to convey. So it's sort of about my mind and about how our minds work um, and how our um, brains, you know, that's, that's the whole thing that this meditation practice that I had and that, you know, something I think about a lot is, is just how our brains work and the kinds of things they, that we think about. Um, so, and, and uh, so that's, that's uh, a, a part of how I work is, is just the process of something. Um, and I, more and more, I, my work focuses on what I call the human condition. Um, I'm interested in expressing something about the human condition, uh, what it is to struggle, to have joy, to be frustrated or at peace, um, to, um, you know, again, if I pick up something that uh, I, for instance, I scavenge a lot, I taught at UTA for a long time, and um, they were always great at letting me scavenge in the uh, throwaway pile in the sculpture lab. So I found more jewels of materials there where it's students' attempts at something. And that really interests me, that effort, that trying to make something. Um, and that somebody's given up on it, where I find it and I can see something else in it. I think that's, that's really interesting to me. Um, so I'm interested in those attempts um, in how uh, we're affected by, you know, seasons, by, you know, all kinds of things that, that happen to us. Um, yeah. So, do you want to yeah. jump in there? Sure, yeah, I'll change it up a little bit. For those that don't know me, well, most of you do know me. <laughs> you don't. Uh, I'm not a real drug addict. I went through a lot of hallucinations, uh, hallucinating drugs or anything like that. I say that because one of my sisters brought my attention that she was talking to her girlfriends about some of my work and they said, whoa, he really does some really good drugs. And I don't 
That's just it. But Mel and I both have a, a lot in common. That would be one thing for sure, as you can tell from the things that she has, from the things that I've collected. And uh, I think that time is a factor in our work as well. So there's a lot of commonality between the two of us. And when I saw her work for the first time, I really enjoyed meeting up with uh, her personally and finding out that she and I have so much in common. Uh, my work delves with history as well. Uh, some, of the, some of the works that I like doing have uh, a history about them that I don't even realize. Um, I've used cut out boards that I work on in my studio and they get worked on so much that I have to remove them to get a clean surface and start all over again because we all work in, you know, little areas of our studio, I think. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, we've got a big studio, but we're working in this one general area. So, <clears throat> a, a piece that I've got on the wall over here with this blue Zeppelin is one of the ones that uh, typifies a working space that I'm doing things on and all of the history that goes with that particular piece. I thought for some reason we were all going to be walking around here, so that's why I picked out about four or five pieces that I think might be of interest. That being one of them. And Zeppelins are one of the uh, images that I've always thought was kind of interesting. Uh, hearing the story about a woman uh, in downtown with her son, uh, they were talking about Jesus and churches or something like that and the little boy said something like mom how do we know where God is and I think there was a football game or something going on on the other side of town and it was a uh, a good good uh, yeah. good year blimp flying by thank you and she looked up and said that's God right there he's watching over and that just that little story just kind of made me think about Zeppelins again. So I use those as kind of a little travelog in pieces where it's usually flying by and there's a city in the background or something like that. That's what that particular piece uh, was all about. And I've got several in a series that I've sold off and I don't know where they are now. Are you saying that some of your pieces are religious? Uh, yeah, I do. I do cover religion in some of my work. It's not usually. Uh, <laughs> it's not your typical religion. I, I don't really believe in God per se. Uh, I just assume leave it up to nature to tell us the course of our life and how we interact with nature. And the further we get away from nature, I think the more we're going to lose touch with ourselves. It's a shame. I was reading uh, today uh, in the New York Times that <coughs> the, uh, the forests in uh, Brazil are being shot down at twice the rate that they ever had. Been. And, you know, the Amazon is like the lungs of, of the world. And uh, it's a shame that that has to happen. But yeah, religion is one of the subjects I cover. Uh, time is another uh, subject that I cover. The, the pandemic kind of took me away from scavenging, as I love to do. And SMU was one place that I'd go and get old canvases and stuff that had been thrown out for the students. And when things kind of shut down, I had to use the material I had in my studio already. And that was limited to braille and paper and things that I hadn't used already, just laying around. And braille, as this piece over here, I think that's the only braille piece I have here. This braille piece uh, started out as a canvas that I found of a meadow. And it was a beautiful meadow, somebody painted it. it looked well, semi-beautiful. It looked bad. And I covered it up with this brick and called it Silent Spring, kind of as a um, 
an, uh, an homage to Rachel. I can't think of her last name. Carson. Yeah, Rachel. <laughs> she wrote the Silent Spring. <laughs> and it covered up, yeah, it's just like my daughter did. Uh, it covered up the whole piece until there were just little slices of it here and there that you could look at. And I thought that the slices uh, looked interesting and I cut up paper to make them look like sl slices as well to add to it. So if you look at it really carefully, you can see where I've not covered up things and then I've added a few elements to it as well. So that's what I kind of want you to do in a lot of these works. And you see, um, there's some details that you may not catch at the beginning. And I like that because had you bought one, you may look at it one way and then after looking at it a lot, see it in a different way later or see details in it that you didn't see it at the beginning. Um, the other piece. Uh, Oh, the magic piece. Um, I was doing blackboards because of the paperwork, the collage work that I did. I also wanted to delve into, since the, the gates were wide open to do whatever I wanted to. I decided to use blackboards as my material uh, because I was interested in magic as a, a kid and kind of went back to it after finding a book in the library called Practical Magic. And that's where I made a lot of these pieces. Uh, there's like three of them here, I think. But that is the one on the far side over here is the one that I started out with. And my uncle, being a musician, uh, turned me on to a bunch of really cool magic when I went to go visit it. He had a really neat little table with the fringe and everything. He'd do all these slide tricks and everything. That's the fringe from his uh, table. Uh, and if you look at all the drawing aspects of it, because I love to draw, and I, that's primarily what I did as a kid uh, until I got to college and then learned that there are other artists like Robert Rauschenberg and Louise Nevelson and people like that that I really took a shine to. So I came back to drawing, did the um, blackboard pieces, and uh, really enjoyed doing it. Because the blackboard is just here. Yeah, you know, it's can you like, do a magic trick for us now? Can I do a magic trick right now? I can't do a magic trick right now. No. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Well, uh, you bring up something that I'm okay. not to mention. Okay. That is the idea of the mystery. And I think that yeah. that intrigues both of us. And that's more specifically about about mystery, but I think I'm talking more in terms of like uh, expressing something, but not revealing everything. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's amazing the viewer work a little bit to look at it and think about it and try to figure out. I mean, a lot of times the titles of my pieces are clues, but they should. Uh, but I don't. Um, want to tell you everything that was in my mind. It's not an illustration. Can't. No. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know everything. You know? Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know how this piece ended up. It's a mystery. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes a mystery does. Well, I mean, for instance, the piece with the wire, um, <coughs> it was hanging around the studio for a long time, and then, you know, it just uh, occurred to me that, like, <laughs> just be kind of a weird, mysterious form. You stuck those lights in there and made it become something more than crushed construction wire, you know? So I think that's, you know, that's what's compelling to me about making art. It's just the fun of, you know, what occurs to you when you're playing with materials or with, you know, hanging around the studio. Do you have a question back there? If the pandemic limited your materials. Do you feel like it limited your inspiration? Yeah, a lot. How did it change? Yeah, a lot. Because your art has definitely changed in the last year and a half. Yeah, I was going to say, I th think mine personally has changed quite a bit in the last two years. I mean, this pandemic's gonna, been going on. This is year number three. Uh, at least a couple of years now. And I'm just now getting out to see 
uh, scavenging again, and I'm not really looking at the same things I did look at before. I think they have locked in, slowed me down a little bit. Because I see in all these works things that you've been doing for a long time. Okay. But, but now they, yeah, they're kind of, they, they, they become slightly more complex occasionally. That's not really true because a lot of your work is complex. But, but I see a lot of refinement and the fact that you were locked in with these things and had to look at them all the time. Like yeah. change your perspective just that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I generally, I, I think like Marilyn, I think she, like I, put our works on the wall and look at them for a long time. Uh, thinking they're done or not thinking they're done, because I've left works on, on the wall that have been there for like two or three months and I still feel like I added something to it that changed it a little bit. So there's a lot of thought behind, even though it doesn't look like it maybe, uh, behind what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah I, I think it probably changed the work, but I think there's a lot more. I agree with what you're saying, but there's maybe some more subtle layers or levels going on in the work now. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it's been a quieter time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm paying more, more and more attention to the details of, of the work. So, in that same line, would you say that the work has become more interpersonal, more about like the things inside of you versus the things in the outside world during that time? I think it's, that's always the case for me. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's like you take what's happening in the world, but for me, it's like how it channels through me and, you know, how I mull it over and what occurs to me then to put out there. I don't know. Me as well. No question about it. In some cases, I don't let it, I, I let too much of the outside world come in and I don't champ too much of it. And I end up not liking the work as much. Yeah. So here's a thought that just came to me from the audience. Yeah. And that's the, uh, uh, I'm wondering now, you find yourself, you're retired. So, from, you're retired from a real job. Yeah. And do you find yourself less distracted because of all those other things that you were obligated before where you're focused? Is yeah, we're both retired. Yeah, and I, I think we'll, we could probably both agree that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've tuned out that part of our life, and we're more in tune with this part of our life. Yeah, it, it definitely has an effect, no question about well, it. I, for me, I feel like before I was always so chopped up into all these layers. Okay. You know, you had to set aside this block of time for this, and this block of time for this, and you know, and sometimes what you're doing in the studio is still in the back of your mind, of your mind and you're thinking about it, but like you said, it's not on right the now it's, yeah, now I can go in and out of the studio, put her in the garden, look at something again. Yeah, you can stop it. and go I mean, do that if I, you I, want to. You know, I can, yeah, you know, just ponder it in a more focused way and, yeah. and work at it in a more focused way. So. I was working with molds uh, for various materials and, and uh, found it fascinating that some of the junk on the floor of my studio was kind of cool and I would uh, corner it off with wood and pour hydrocal into it and then make a mold of the objects that I had on the floor and I'd use that mold to make a positive and then like that and then I found that the mold that I used dried out after time and used it as a complete piece and it's in the front and then as time has gone on it has slowly deteriorated and spilled out onto the floor of the, uh, the box that I've got it in and I wanted it to collect there and be a, a kind of a time capsule of that particular moment and eventually I'm thinking all the debris will fall to the bottom of the box. I put a piece of velvet there so it would all stay in place it was gonna float around, but I thought, no, I'll get it to stick a little bit. And it changed as time went on. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, for me, is that, you know, and I, 
We'll see you too. But I'm showing some pieces here that have been around for a while, but I either haven't shown ever or that I've shown briefly, you know, for, for a, while, a while back, but not, you know, haven't been out since. Since. Because I thought there was sort of a visual connection. Uh, you know, I wanted to look at them in terms of the, the visual connection over time yeah. and in relation to what Norman's been doing. And so that, that's been really interesting for me, too. It's, well, yeah, I always design. wondered why, yeah. what do artists do with the work that, you know, they had a show, it didn't sell, and they still have it, and then they still have it, and, and they still got it. Yeah. <laughs> this no, was I a mean, chance to get some of that work back. Yeah, part of my thinking of the time. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that was interesting to do. So, I mean, I see a real continuity in the work, so are you saying that there's either in fabrication or concept between the earlier pieces versus pieces that you're making now? There's a big change for you? No, I, don't, I mean, I'm not saying there's a big change. I just thought it was interesting to um, put them together, to see them, because some of them were made a few years ago, to see that link, you know, in the thinking. Yeah, they get they don't always get a chance to come back and be together with new work yeah. and introduce each other. Yeah. So to speak. Question for both of you, how do you know when the piece is done? Uh, sometimes it's that's hard. A good question. And sometimes you know immediately. You know? Yeah, that's kinda uh, true. It's mm -hmm. like, I think like I said, for me, I have I set out what my intention is to begin with. Not, I don't know exactly what the piece is going to look like, but I know what I hope to convey with it. And when I think I've done that, um, you know, and then there's always this kind of formal stuff that I'm messing around with. So um, for me, if I, you know, if, like the piece, like that sculpture there, or this one over here or something, I mean, just formally, you need to look at it. I mean, that's important to me to ask myself, is this the balance piece? Is the color balance in it? Is, the, is there something interesting going on on the surface around, you know, overall? Or, you know, whatever elements there might be formally. I mean, I think that's always going on as well. But I think the intention is real important to me. And sometimes, you know, I'll think something is finished and it'll be, like Norm said, hanging around the studio for a while, and then uh, all of a sudden I'll be like, I mean, there was a painting I showed last spring in the gallery that I showed with in Dallas, and I brought it home to the studio. And sometimes that's dangerous um, for the pieces because it hung around long enough where I just thought, I'm changing that sucker. And it, it's a totally different piece now. You know, because, you know, your thinking changes a little bit or you get a new idea and you're like, eh, how much do I really love that piece? I mean, you can only store so much stuff. So you got to do something with it. And so, I mean, my attitude is it's not precious. And, you know, you can just make it different. So I was really curious about that as you were talking about, you know, these objects that you find the students have made and the idea of the attempt. And so you are reworking your own works in that same fashion. That yeah. You have this early yeah. piece. Do you document that as like, or do you have yeah, a documentation? Well, usually, as a, usually as a there's yeah. Commentary of the time and change. I mean, yeah. It's very, it's yeah. Usually yeah. there's a record of the earlier piece, and then you know, but but I mean, it's just, it's just art, you know. Uh, I, I, I actually went as far as to start a piece, take pictures of it, then continue to work with it, take pictures of it, continue to work with it, take pictures of it, and doing the, yeah. doing the whole process. Sometimes. And thought I'd take pictures during the whole process yeah. because I knew it was going to take a little bit of time for this piece to you know evolve. So I, I have actually documented that part of it. Nice. 